All right, we are talking about ballistics today. So ballistics is the science of the propulsion, flight, and impact of projectiles. Uh, so ballistics is basically the study of bullets and firearms. And by definition, a firearm is a weapon that's capable of firing a projectile. And it does this by using a confined explosive. So specifically in forensics, ballistics involves the examination of evidence from firearms that may have been used in a crime. And there's a lot of information that ballistics can give or tell investigators. So investigators can use ballistics to determine the type of firearm that was used, the caliber of bullet that was fired. Um, and by caliber, we mean the diameter of the bore of a rifle or a handgun. Uh, the number of bullets that was fired, where a shooter was standing when they fired a weapon, uh, the angle of impact from shooter to victim, if the firearm was used in a previous crime, and there's others that aren't listed here, but these are the, um, the major points of ballistics. So you need to know that modern firearms are classified in two ways. So we have handguns and we have long guns. And so you need to know sort of the difference between the two. So generally, long guns are designed to be held by both hands and braced against the shoulder, whereas handguns can be fired with a single hand. So your handguns include things like pistols and revolvers. Long guns are going to include rifles and shotguns, and you can further classify these. Um, but for our purposes for this class, um, just what you see on the screen is all you need to know. So you need to be able to recognize these in a picture. So if you see um, this picture, you need to say, hey, that is a long gun. Or if you see this picture, you need to say, I can classify that as a handgun. Um, so we can get into a lot of detail, but we're not for, for forensics. All right, so both the rifle and the shotgun have long barrels. Um, and we're going to talk about this in a second, but these long barrels create unique rifling marks on bullets as those bullets are propelled through the barrel. Now, handguns, and by handguns, I mean pistols and revolvers, they're going to have shorter barrels, but these barrels, although they're short, also create unique rifling patterns on bullets. And so that's part of the lesson today. We're going to talk about how that makes bullets unique and how that has a huge impact on ballistics. All right, so let's start with the parts of a, a modern day cartridge. Okay, so you can see, and cartridges are going to differ, but just for simplicity's sake, this is the one that we're going to look at. We're going to go through the different parts. So starting with the bullet, this is going to be the projectile. And then you have the case, which basically just holds all the parts together. And then you have the gunpowder. And then you have the rim, which provides uh, the extractor on the firearm a place to grip the casing uh, so that it can be removed from the chamber once it's fired. And then you have the uh, number five here is the primer, and that's going to ignite the propellant. Okay, so we're going to talk about how this whole process works. Now, um, it differs by weapon, um, but for, again, for simplicity's sake, if you'll just kind of watch this animation here, kind of explains what's going on. So basically, the trigger's pulled, the firing pin, which is back here on the back, it's going to hit the base of the cartridge. Again, let me go back. When we say cartridge, this is what we mean. It's going to hit the base of the cartridge. It's going to ignite the gunpowder that's inside the bullet. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to build pressure. So the pressure of the ignition is going to propel the bullet forward from the casing. It's going to move through the barrel. As it does that, it's going to create what's called rifling. We'll talk about that in just a second. and then your uh, casing is uh, ejected. All right, now, in forensics, firearm identification is going to be a method that's used to determine if a bullet or a cartridge was shot from a particular weapon. So every weapon is going to leave its own unique reproducible markings on a bullet and on the cartridge, 
that it was fired from. So that's regardless of gun type, style, manufacturer, all of those things. So you can think of it as a ballistics fingerprint. So if investigators recover bullets from a crime scene, the forensic examiners can test fire a suspect's gun and then compare the marks on the crime scene bullet to the marks on the test fired bullet to determine if there's a match. So the examiner is going to assess how similar the two sets of marks are and ultimately they'll be able to tell, hey, this bullet was fired from this weapon or this bullet was not fired from this weapon. Cartridge cases are compared the same way. And we're going to go through and look at some unique markings that are found on the bullets and the cartridge casings. All right, so starting with the bullet, you can see here in the picture, uh, you'll have scratch marks on the bullet. So you need to know where these, stra these scratch marks come from. Now, we don't call them scratch marks. We call them striations. So this is a vocabulary term you need to make sure that you're familiar with. So striations are scratch marks that are left on a projectile by the rifling lines that are inside of the barrel. Now those rifling lines are called lands and grooves. So as the bullet is propelled forward through the barrel, the lands and grooves inside the barrel make unique scratches or striations on the bullet. And then investigators can take the bullet from a crime scene compare it to a test-fired weapon bullet from a suspect's gun, and they can use um, split-screen microscopes uh, to compare. So you can see here, they've used a split-screen microscope to compare the striation patterns, and they'll be able to determine uh, if they're a match or not. Now, they can also use a process called topography uh, to compare surface texture so that's also a process that's used in addition to the split screen microscopes. But both of those are processes that look at the striation patterns on bullets. Now on the casing, you can also have something called a breech marking. So breech markings are marks that are left on spent cartridges. And you can see that in the picture here, you have breech markings. So when a firearm shot, the explosive force pushes the bullet forward. We mentioned this earlier, Newton's third law is going to send for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the bullet's going to propel forward, uh, the casing is going to move backwards, and it's going to hit a mechanism called the breech block. And the breech block is there to prevent the cartridge from shooting the user as it recoils. Um, so it's going to stop the casing. So when it does that, because of the force, it's going to create a unique stamp. We call this a breech mark um, that's going to be produced on the back of the cartridge casing. And so these breech marks are unique and they can also be viewed under a split screen microscope to determine if they are a match. So if this cartridge was fired uh, from a suspect weapon, and compared to a crime scene uh, casing, and there's a match, then that gives investigators some lead way. Now, another marking that is unique to uh, a cartridge casing is something called a firing pin marking. So the firing pin of a firearm is gonna also leave a unique stamp. So I'm gonna go back to our animation so you can see where this is. So you have the firing pin that's gonna punch uh, the back of the, the primer and it's going to ignite the gunpowder. And so where it sort of punches the back of the cartridge uh, primer and rim, you get these unique marks. And so investigators can, um, again, they're like a fingerprint. So investigators can use a microscope or topography to determine uh, if they were fired from a suspect's weapon, weapon or not. Now, another component of ballistics is gunshot residue, um, and for short, we'll call it GSR. So, all firearms produce GSR when fired, um, and GSR is basically just different residues. Um, so, smoke, particles, unburned powder, um, nitrates, and so gunshot residue these nitrates stick to a person when they fire a weapon and there are tests uh, that investigators can use to test for gunshot residue. 
Uh, and this can be helpful too. It can help determine if somebody fired a weapon or if somebody was um, exposed to the nitrates. Uh, maybe they were in the same place when a weapon was fired. The amount of GSR is also going to be helpful to investigators. So if they are determining, if they identify GSR, um, their investigators know that the amount of GSR is going to decrease as the distance between the firearm and the victim increases and vice versa. Um, gunshot residue is going to increase as the distance between the firearm and the victim decreases. And so all of this is used to sort of try to figure out the events that took place at a crime scene. Now, GSR can be removed by wa the washing of the hands, but there are going to be residual um, amount, trace amounts of GSR that can show up on a test um, despite removal attempts. So that's also helpful. Um, with a good attorney, though, it, it could be easily... Um, I mean, you could say, I shook the hand of this person who went hunting that this morning and I got gunshot residue on my hand. So gunshot residue is kind of tricky. It's helpful, but it's kind of tricky um, in an investigation. Now, GSR also creates patterns on victims when they're shot. So that can help investigators determine distance between the weapon that was fired and then the victim. And that's often helpful because if they can figure out where a shooter was standing, they might can get um, cartridge casings, spent cartridge casings or other evidence that the person may have left behind. Trajectory is also used, so this is the physics of firearms and bullets and projectiles. Uh, so investigators can be, they're able to calculate the bullet's path or trajectory. Uh, if you have watched any sort of documentary over um, the JFK assassination, then they, they for many years have used trajectory to try to figure out exactly where um, the person was shooting when they shot JFK. So this requires investigators to understand a lot of different things, how a bullet behaves once it leaves a weapon. There are so many factors that must be accounted for when um, trying to determine the trajectory of a bullet. Um, but investigators are trained for this. They, they study this, they know this, they are very specialized in this. Um, and so trajectory can be calculated and it can be very helpful to investigators. All right, so what I want us to do before we, um, before we end today is I'm going to give you a little assignment. I want you to, we're going to do some research over the database that houses ballistic information. So you know how you have um, APHIS for fingerprints, you have CODIS for DNA. Well, you have a database called um, IBIS for ballistic information. So IBIS stands for Integrated Ballistic Identification System. And I want you to hop over to YouTube and type in Ballistic Identification Technology. And I want you to watch this video that was produced by Watch Mojo. Um, it does a really good job of walking through some of the things we discussed today. And then they're going to expand on the IBIS database, which is important for you to know. So before you finish today, I want you to hop over to YouTube, type in ballistic identification technology, watch that video. It's only about four minutes. You'll get a lot of good information from it, and I will see you in the next video.